Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to take a look at three-phase semiconverter circuit. So let's get started. So this is the circuit diagram of a three-phase semiconverter. If you carefully observe the major difference with a fully controlled rectifier is that the lower legs are replaced with diodes instead of a thyristor. So you only have some amount of control with help of T1, T3 and T5, isn't it? Now, how do we analyze these type of circuits? It's pretty simple, just like the way we did it for three phase fully controlled rectifier. We're going to start with analyzing the waveforms. So we're going to consider three phase sinusoidal voltage source, each displaced by a phase angle of 120 degrees. So B is exactly starting at 120 and C is exactly starting at 240 degrees respectively. Now, what are the line voltage waveforms? So we had previously understood in the fully controlled rectifier video where I had explained how do we draw these line voltage waveforms. So in case you're not clear on how to draw these waveforms, please do refer to that video because the explanation remains the same irrespective of the circuit that we are considering. So we need to come to a point where we can get the line voltage waveform because from the line voltage waveform is what we are going to extrapolate and understand what's the output voltage waveform looking like. So in case you have not understood the line voltage waveform, please do watch our previous videos. Now moving on, let's consider how the circuit operates. And based on that, we can consider what happens for V out at alpha is equal to 30, 60 and 90 degree respectively. So let's consider the circuit operation. So initially what happens is the pattern of triggering these circuits is that it conducts in this particular fashion or sequence that is 6 1 conducts this is 1 1 2 conducts it's just like the way it was for the fully controlled rectifier only difference is here we have diodes instead of thyristors for the lower legs so 6 1 1 2 2 3 3 4 4 5 5 6 so this is the pattern in which we will trigger again 6 1 repeats so one important observation that is to be made here is we have only three thyristors, meaning to say overall 360 degree is divided by three. So every 120 degree is where we are going to trigger the thyristors that is T1, T3 and T5. So if T1 is triggered for, if we start triggering T1, T1 will not be triggered till the next cycle that is 120 degrees. So T3 will be triggered after that. After 120 degrees, T5 will be triggered after that. So that's where we are going to achieve the control in terms of 360 degrees. Now what happens initially, as I mentioned, six and one will be conducting. That is phase A will ensure that T1 is forward biased. Phase B will ensure that D6 is forward biased. Consequently, both are acting as short circuit and the current starts flowing from the source to the load in this particular direction. That is through this direction and we are getting an output voltage V out over here. So what is V out here? V out is nothing but V A B, isn't it? So V out is nothing but V A B when six and one are conducting. So when alpha is equal to 30, meaning to say that in all the previous videos we had seen that we cannot control these circuits up to a point. The point is nothing but the minimum cross section angle. That is the angle at which we will be able to control the SCR is nothing but beyond 30 degrees because this is the point if we consider below 30 degrees with respect to phase A all the other phases will be reverse biasing the circuit and will not be having any control over the circuit as a result we will always start from this particular point. So when alpha is equal to 30 meaning to say 30 plus 30 is what we have to add. So the waveform that we are going to analyze will basically start at 60 degree. So what happens at 60 degree? We saw that 6 and 1 was conducting. Consequently, we will be getting output voltage to be the line voltage VAB. So exactly at 60 degree, what will happen? It will start following the line voltage waveform that is VAB over here. So it starts following this and up to this point, it will follow the line voltage VAB. Now at this point, what is happening is if you carefully extrapolate with respect to the supply voltage waveform, phase c is forward biasing phase c is forward biasing the next diode that is d2 
So phase C is forward biasing D2, which in turn is reverse biasing D6. So basically phase C is becoming more positive compared to the any other phases in the circuit at this point. As a result, now instead of 6 and 1 conducting, now 1 and 2 will be conducting, meaning to say that 6 is going out and 2 is coming in. So in that case, what will happen? 1 and 2 is conducting in the sense 1 and 2 is conducting. So they are acting as forward biased and short circuit. So 2 is associated with C and 1 is associated with A. So V out will nothing but be equal to VAC in that case. So V out will nothing but be equal to VAC. So when I say it's equal to VAC, it will start continuing to follow the line voltage waveform of AC. So it continues to follow the line voltage waveform of AC up to this point. I hope this point is clear. Again, it continues till this point. The reason is because I mentioned that once T1 starts conducting or once T1 is triggered, it will be conducting for a period of 120 degrees, meaning to say 60 it started. It will be conducting till 180 because 60 to 180 the duration is 120 degrees. So this is the point where we are going to trigger T3. So T3 is going to be triggered, meaning to say the next conduction sequence that is 2, 3 will be happening. So when 2, 3 is conducting again, the waveform will be like the same one that we have got previously. So in this case, and the cycle repeats. So we're going to exactly get the same nature of waveforms. So the respective, like the output voltages that are available is just mentioned over here. So initially it will be following AB and then AC and then when 2, 3 is conducting, it will follow BC waveform and BA waveform. In the next case, that is when 3, 4 is conducting. Again, when 4, 5 is conducting, it will follow CA. When 5, 6 is conducting, it will follow CB. So this is the nature of waveform that we are going to get when alpha is equal to 30 degrees. I hope this point is clear. Now let's take a look at what happens when alpha is equal to 60 degrees. When alpha is equal to 60 degrees, what is happening? We have to add 30 plus 60, that is 90 degrees. This is the point where we are supposed to start our analysis of the waveform, isn't it? So at this point, what is happening is that at alpha is equal to 60 degrees, you will be getting a waveform something like this. It will start and then it will start following the, the line voltage, that is VAC. Why is it VAC? Because we know that at this point, the resistor T1 will anyways be conducting, but diode D6 was getting reverse biased and D2 was getting forward biased, isn't it? Because phase C was becoming more positive. So as a result, you're getting straight away line voltage AC waveform and the line voltage AB waveform is actually skipped because we are triggering at alpha is equal to 60 degree. As a result, you will be starting with AC. And at this point, what will happen again? next set of thyristor that is the overall duration from 90 till this point is nothing but 210 degrees isn't it so it's nothing but 120 degrees so you will be starting triggering the next thyristor that is t3 so when t3 is triggered at this point even though you see the circuit according to the conduction sequence 2 3 has to be triggered but since 2 will be reversed by asked because 4 is going to be forward biased, meaning to say at this point, what is going to happen? If you carefully observe, that is with respect to 4, phase A is becoming more reverse biased, meaning to say it's going to forward biased D4. So phase A is becoming maximum positive. As a result, it will forward bias D4. Since we don't have any control over the diodes, as a result, what will happen? This cycle 2, 3 will be skipped and we'll be having 3, 4. When 3, 4 is conducting, what will happen? 3 and 4 is conducting, meaning to say we will be getting, that is, 3 is connecting, 3 is connected to that of phase B and 4 is connected to that of A. So you will be getting exactly the waveform of line voltage BA. So V out will be equal to VBA. Again, we will be getting a same sequence due to CB. So basically line voltage is AB, B, C and C A are skipped because of the diodes that are used. If you are using a thyristor and planning to trigger it, which we did in the previous case in a fully controlled rectifier, then we'll be having complete control over the circuit. But in this case, we don't have control because we are using diodes in the lower legs. Now what happens when alpha is equal to 90 degrees? Meaning to say it will be starting at 30 plus 90 degrees, that is 120 degrees at this point. So at this point, what will happen? 
is that you will be getting the waveform the line voltage AC will be followed just like the way we had explained previously the line voltage AC will be followed in this case and then it will go to zero to some point over here the reason it is going to zero is because we are not triggering the next thyristor so if you carefully observe we are starting at 120 degrees so 120 plus 120 240 is when we are going to trigger the next thyristor that is T3 isn't it so as a result since we are not triggering any thyristor at this duration and at this point if you carefully observe we are having an output voltage to be equal to zero so exactly we will be getting zero at this point and again we will be following BA waveform because next cycle that is T3 and T4 will be conducting again next cycle T5 and T6 will be conducting you will be getting CB again you can extrapolate the waveform in the initial cases over here so point to be observed here is when alpha is equal to or greater than 60 degrees you are getting discontinuous waveform meaning to say that the output voltage will be equal to zero so this is the waveform with respect to a resistive load so if you consider an inductive load also the output voltage waveform will remain the same only thing is that the current can be continuous or discontinuous depending upon the inductor value that we are choosing I hope this video gave you a clear understanding of how to analyze a three-phase semiconverter. In case you have any questions, feel free to reach out by typing in your questions in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Thank you.